Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, oh look who's there. Hi. Hi, Lori Thompson. (laughs) How are you you doing, man? Uh, uh, Do I look okay? Do I look, I don't look pale today, do I? No, 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 you look fantastic, Mom. Because I was balancing the, the color, and I just yeah. felt I looked too green. You look green? No, your couch is green, but you're not green, and I'm green. green. Yeah, I but guess. I we're, guess. we're hogging all the green. You couldn't be green if you wanted to. That's right. So I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little tired today. You'll have to excuse me. But last night, I, for some reason, I don't know why, I don't have a bad back, okay? No. Yeah. I have a little, but when you don't have one, you're lucky, man. No, but it's been raining, and it's been cold. And all of a sudden, yesterday, my back started killing me. And then this torn meniscus, which hasn't bothered me that much, was just, it was agonizing, Rage. right? So, yeah. So Marjorie gave me one of her, her pain pills, her heavy pain pills that she uses the for The good back. stuff? Yeah, Does good. it have oxy in it? <laughs> I, I, I think it used to, uh, but it's uh, a yeah. It's, before they made it politically it's, correct, it's a different kind now. Uh, and so I took it, and for some reason, I don't know about that drug, whatever it is, I have a hard time sleeping on it. And so That's all unusual. night long, you ever have those nights where you, you do sleep but you think you're awake? Right, it's not documentable sleep. Oh yeah. man, I was just, I'm, <laughs> and so I'm loopy right now, you know. But we'll have a couple of nice conversations here. You're getting Who's ready that? to go to California, right? I am, and I've got to say, it always amps my anxiety. I mean, if I'm going to take a plane 20 miles, um, it always amps my anxiety. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. it well, the, it used to be, you know, it used to be when I was a kid, you'd go to the airport, you'd walk down a hall. At the end of it, there's an airplane, and he got on it and it took off. Heaven. Yeah, close to. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not that way um, anymore. No, and plus it's the, I'm trying to keep it all in a carry-on bag. Yep. And, and uh, so I've packed and unpacked like 15 times. And I've got it down to this carry-on now. But you imagine yourself in every situation is like, well, I want to look cool. I don't want to look dumb. So I don't have the shoes to make me look really cool. So I got to modify. Well, you're this. going. You're going to you, the worst kind of thing you could go to for for pressure. You're you're going um, to and, you're going to kind of a reunion. Yeah. And so exactly, you want to look better than all the other people. Or just as good, you know. I'll settle for just as good. Yeah. Uh, so you 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 know you get all dressed up, and shall I wear this? And what kind of shoes shall I wear for that? And uh, that's why I don't go to those things. <laughs> you know, especially if you're coming, if you fly. And but now Lisa, Lisa Carr is going to be there. I'm delighted to see, it. and she's driving in from Vallejo. She can change her clothes ten or twelve times before she. Well, this is, this is a live 105 um, uh, reunion, is it? Is that what yeah. it's called? And uh, it uh, what's interesting is nobody invited me to it. Well, Ben, they re- I told them I would relay the information, which I have yeah. um, over the time. And yeah. uh, it's just sometimes people get... They they get they lose track of folks because the email is not current or something like that, and it's not. Believe me, it's not intentional. Yeah, well, that's anyway, what, anyway, I, w- I probably wouldn't have gone anyway. You know, well, because, sure. Because so, to begin uh, with, here in New York, you have to find the exit. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you you knew how you got into New York, but you can't remember how to get out. Yeah. It's like the Hotel California. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, that was uh, that. That's that's my biggest problem. 
And the other thing is, I was going to make the little video for them, but then I figured, I don't know what to say, so I'm not going to do it. You know. Oh, then that would have been fun. Well, just, but I just give everybody also, give everybody my best. Okay. And, and tell them that I'm too old and infirm to make the trip. I you won't know. tell them that. You know. I'll just say he had a pressing meeting uh, with uh, the executive branch, something like that. Yeah. You know, something good yeah. that'll yeah. cause cause that buzz. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what you want to do at a reunion, cause a buzz. Why are they doing? Is the, is there a year? attached to this for the reunion? I mean, is it so many years since or whatever? Or? I don't think it's that specific. So, because people that have just started working there, from my understanding, will be there. It's all going to meet some new people. And my favorite kind of thing, where I know some of the people, I'll meet some new people. And the, I think a lot of people from the past, because um, uh, I looked kind of at the list, but like uh, Rick Stewart, Big Rick, and uh, his wife, Vidya, who also worked for us. Mm -hmm. It was like, they live in Vegas now, so it was like, well, I'm coming. See, this is the trump card that we would both get to play. Yeah, I'm coming all the way from Florida. And uh, so then when someone's coming from Vegas, I said, throw that in their mug, you know? Yeah, well, also, I don't want to leave uh, here because I prefer the homeless in New York to the homeless in California. Oh, it's a better brand of homeless? Better, better brand of homeless, yeah. yeah. More resilient people. Yeah. They don't bitch about being homeless. <laughs> I, remember, I remember once years ago, I'm walking down the street and this guy, we, we used to call them, they were, you know what beggars are called actually? Mendicamps. Mendicamps? Yeah. Well, you drove it Mendicants. out. Let... Mendicants, that's it, mendicants. Okay. And uh, this mendicant comes up to me with his hand out and says, can you give me a quarter? I'm trying to buy a yacht. <laughs> How can you resist that? I gave him a dollar. <laughs> yeah, said, you know, buy that, four. <laughs> that, that's, that's too brilliant, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, like, I'm yeah. more prone to give someone, if they have a sign that says, who am I kidding? I want to buy a beer. <laughs> and yeah. I'll give them, you know, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. That'll that'll turn on you, fella. Yeah. But yeah. But you know, so I you know, um 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 it, give them my best and uh I, I wouldn't oh, yeah. I just I couldn't I can not get what to say, you know. In the well, you're on the spot, plus it's different when you're at it like I'll try I'm gonna try to zoom you, you know, just get a few people that you know and Kind of line them up like a producer would oh, do. Oh sure, do that. I'd love to do yeah. that. Yeah, I, I thought I thought you might get a what kick time, out of it. What time? What time is the thing out there? It's four to six, and so that is California time, which would obviously be my. It'd be seven to. Okay. Be seven well, and to that, nine. that's on s Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. I'll be here. Okay. Okay. I ain't well, leaving. I never. I never leave the house anyway. So you know. Well, you know, you got all your stuff. Plus, you have you a know, trip down. I I can't walk anymore. Really, I'm telling you the truth because I took that fall, okay. Yeah. Then my knee got all banged up, and then it got infected, and then I, I'm on antibiotics now to clear clear it up, okay. Yeah. Then I also pulled the meniscus in my knee. I had a bad knee, but then they put cortisone in there, but that doesn't take care of the meniscus, and uh, I I just between all of those and the fact that I take certain medications that you know I have the neuropathy and whatever i find it hard to walk because i, yeah, I don't have balance you know that see that's it it takes away the confidence of walking yeah. so, and when like bring my yeah so i'm walking with a cane now not not well today i needed it because of the cold and everything that was hurting but i i just carry it now ever since that fall just for me to feel safe so confident yeah, yeah and secure and safe you know yeah but, but I, I i haven't needed it i haven't fallen you know although i did fall yeah. again but in this apartment in this room right after the show well, i have i have this green screen back here right and and uh i had it down uh but it's uh it rolls up it's in a big thing and i i tripped over it and some more bruising and you know Muscle memory. See, after I sprained that ankle, now I fall to the ground. Boom. I mean, no warning, no anything. It's really? instant, and my face is on the pavement. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that's only wonderful. Happened. That's what's happened to us, folks. That's yeah. what's happened to us. 
You well, know. I've kind of learned to sense it now, and I can usually recover and then, you know, make a big deal like, oh, look what was in my way. Yeah, yeah. But, I, you know, I worry a little bit that, you know, that I, I just don't, uh, I, I'm getting getting older and older and older. <laughs> well, I know, and we got the, but those, you know, it's a, it's a fun option because I have prayed since I was 12, I think, to age gracefully. I still don't know exactly what it means, hmm. but... Have, I, age, have some, I aged gracefully? I think you've aged great. I do think you've you're aged gracefully. You're lying through your teeth, lady. I am not. Oh, you're no. not. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, you so there. Not. It's Lori's word. Lori says, well, S-E-Z. If Lori says S-E-Z, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I was going to, if I ever had a website, it would probably be that. You know, just me and my my mental meanderings yeah but uh yet you know why that happens is muscle memory mm -hmm. like even your body has a little of it when you go in for surgery even though you're not out and you don't feel it your body remembers those things and so i don't know it's something about my like with a sprained ankle my ankle starts to roll and it happens so quickly that uh you don't really? notice it really yeah you just and all you can do I is don't have that. You know what it, my, mine is, is just simply that as you get older, there's the pers the thing that happens to you is you lose balance. And you do? Yeah. I mean, I, I especially some of the drugs I'm taking helps with that. That know, will. But, I mean, I don't feel confident that I have the balance. That's that's what really is bothering me now. Yeah. That's what that's what the best the thing about aging you really have to work to keep your confidence up. And when we yeah. take confidence in our body uh, for granted. Yeah. And right. yet yeah, you just have to maintain mm -hmm. that. And meditation helps, uh, prayer helps. Yeah. Uh, you know, all kinds of things can help you with that confidence because when you had a bad fall, you know, your confidence is a little chipped. Yeah, well that fall was not a good one. Not a good one. No, I, mean, I know, as if there's a good fall. <laughs> well, that was so fun. I was too. thinking that, you know, if they really cared about older people, they would make the sidewalks out of rubber. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why not have them made out of a, 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 a softer material rather like than this spaghetti. hard pavement? You know. Yeah. With with that, with concrete that isn't smooth, it's ridged so that when you fall, it's like a razor shaving off an inch of your arm. You know. Oh yeah, I know. Or asphalt. You know, so you can have a pebble permanently lodged in your cheek. Yeah. Now, do you do you believe in coincidence? I believe uh, things happen. It's just like on a loop. There was a Kurt Vonnegut line mm. about a a loop. And I think that given the multiple, multiple times that this civilization, civilization has mm -hmm. turned over, um, there it's going to kind of establish some patterns in the universe. Yeah, well, let, me, let, me, let me tell you my latest. Now, you know, so, my, yes. my biggest, what can I call it? The biggest coincidence uh, that I ever had was when I was sitting at home in, in San Francisco Mm -hmm. And there was a guy known as a subway shooter who went down into the subway and shot a bunch of kids, shot at a bunch what? of kids, right? In New York, right? In New York, in New right. And I'm trying to remember his name now. Forgot it. Uh, but then again, that's my brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, but um, he, he, uh, he went down and he shot, uh, Bernie Getz, that was his name. And so somebody oh. calls me up and and, and says, uh, did you hear about that subway shooter? I said, yeah, they said they finally caught him. He said, uh, do you, and do you know where he lives? He lived in the building you lived in. Whoa. And he probably lived right above you uh, or, or below you because were you an 8i? And I went, yes. And he went, oh my God, that's his apartment now. Oh my gosh! So I, I left the apartment. And I've always felt guilty that I had something to do with those guys. One guy being lame for the rest of his life. See, because if yeah. I hadn't moved out, Bernie Getz wouldn't have moved in. This is true. And if you'd cleaned with bleach, not only would you get your deposit back, Bernie Getz would have been brighter and more enthusiastic about life. He complained. So he complained to my friend Al Goldstein, who got to know him. That we left the apartment in a mess. 
Oh, people always say that nonsense. No, oh, I can't help it if he like is a neat freak. Right, everybody he wants has to clean up his apartment and then the subways of people he doesn't like. So you know, yeah, yeah, he's taken it to extreme. So that, and, that up until now, that's been my my greatest coincidence. I figured when that happened, I wasn't going to win any lotteries, nothing. All my all the possibilities of coincidence had been spent on that particular thing. Well, I was wrong. Oh, you got another one in the pipe. I what have another it? one just happened. What? Well, you've heard about uh, the fact that Donald Trump now uh, is has been considered a fraud and can no mm -hmm. longer do business in the state of New York because well. the judge the judge did a summary a summary judgment, which a summary judgment is especially in civil cases. Yeah, you don't have uh, where the judge is going to have to decide what's right and what's wrong. There's no jury or anything like that. It's just pleaded, pled in front of a judge, and then, you know. So he can do a summary judgment in which he says, well, looking at what you've handed me already, I can already make a decision on this, and that's what he did yesterday. He, he fraudulently yeah. inflated his, his worth or his yeah. assets, right? Okay, now you're probably wondering where this is all going. Somewhere. Okay. We had this big case with our landlord and with the apartment and the guy who rented it to us and all. Went on for 10, 10 years. And in the end, we wound up in court, of course, before a judge because we couldn't suss the thing out. And um, guess who the judge was? Who? Same one. The same one. <laughs> <laughs> judge and Garin, yeah. 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 Wow. That's well. Especially, things seem so big. The world seems so big. Yeah. But I've learned as I travel more that, uh, and see if you've been raised in the church, which I was, yeah. um, you see things as not mere coincidences, but um, a blessing, a charmed life, um, just you know something yeah. that but, happened. But this, this, you know, it when I saw this happen, uh, you know, it was this judge. Uh, because I was watching TV and they showed the the paper, you know, the the uh, decision, and it said Judge in Garin, and I went, Oh my God, that's my judge! It's and, a small and, world. And, in spite of the fact that you know we can't we came out okay on the deal, uh, I, at yeah. the end when we were had we had decided what we were going to do, and we had made peace with everybody, the landlord and this guy, and they still had to go on together against each other. Uh, the judge pulled us into the into his office, and we sat there and we talked for about 10, 15 minutes, and he is really a nice guy. You know, cool. Genuinely a nice say. guy, but he doesn't put up with any crap. Yeah. And there was some crap, say, from the landlords in his decision. He just railed against the landlord, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the case of Trump, he did exactly the same thing. In fact, he was so mad at them, he supposedly at one point was pounding his fist on the on the de desk because Whoa. he couldn't he couldn't stand he said I won't put up with these kind of lies in my courtroom. Oh, it sounds like suits. Yeah. Yeah. You and he, he admonished his lawyers and said, You should know better than this. You know, whoa, taking oh, off the gloves. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so that's my that's my coincidence. Well, yeah. very good. And they're, uh, they uh, definitely money. not winning the lottery now. No, you know, for, don't even buy a ticket. Uh, but this yeah. sounding, <laughs> you know, this this dilemma that you encountered uh, sounds like a Key West Wenzel situation. There is so much craft and grift down there. Like I where? sublet where uh, Key West. I Key lived West? there for about a year. Worked at a really fun. Station oh, so you down there. lived you lived in Key West. So you lived uh, near. Um, Hemingway's home, right? I did with the cats. With the and the cats are still the well, the, not the same yeah. cats, but the, they're, the their legacy, the their lineage. Few, few generations later, because he had how many cats? He had. Oh, they, well, so you know how cats are. You know, they they think they own the place, and they do soon. And they do. But yeah. assertiveness. But my mom, when she came down, you know, when you live there, you don't really do a lot of that tourist stuff. But my mom you went came to down. the very tip of the United States. Oh yeah, there's a big buoy 
that says you are at the southernmost tip of the United States. And it, people get pictures there. I think I even have one when I first moved. But there, I sublet from a guy that I found on the internet, or maybe he just found by word of mouth. And he had a food truck. So he said, yeah, come down to my food truck, I called him, and uh, I'll, I will rent you this part. It was half an apartment yeah, yeah. for $1,000 or nine ninety, And so it was great. Little did I know that he was a career fraudster, and his specialty was identity theft. So he, I gave him a big deposit because he said the rent would be, he would take some off the rent. Well, all the money I paid him, it was somehow uh, he was doing a pyramid scheme and keeping his money in the air and using my money to fund and then pull in other scams. So it was none of the money that I gave him was going to our our rent. And so and this went on for about well, wait, six, wait a minute, Matt, but he owned the apartment. No, oh. he didn't. He had sublet it to me. Oh, oh one of fell. those deals. Oh, forget yeah. it. And it was, and in Key West, you just, if you're moving there, you know, you got to really, uh, you need something rather, rather quickly. And the rent, because like hotels are 300 and 400 a night, you know, and so that's a consideration when you're taking a sublet. There's an urgency to take a sublet. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And then he came to me, and I'm such a naive Midwesterner sometimes still, that he said, if we pay rent in advance, then it will be a bigger discount and we'll only have to pay this much. The landlord oh, so, said, so what oh, you're saying is he then got your money but yeah. didn't pay his rent. Exactly. And so this, and he, the way he tiered it um, was at you know, the first couple months it was one scam, but he learned the second and third and fourth he, months he saw, required- he, he, saw, he saw a real sucker coming along, he didn't did. he? I hate to say it, but he did. Oh boy. And so I, when I contacted the state's attorney, because he forged, he got into my checks, mm -hmm. um, without me knowing, obviously, and forged one for 10 grand. And thankfully, my bank in beautiful Bloomington, Illinois, thank you, Nancy Ammerman, um, at Heartland Bank, caught it. And she said, Lori, we have a check here you know, for $10,000, and we don't think it's your signature on the check. I said, well, who's it made out to? And they told me his name. I was like, well, that's my roommate, and I think we need to have a sit down. And so when I called the state's attorney, or I, I said, I'm looking for his name. And they said, so are a lot of people <laughs> when you've just been ripped off. You know, you don't, really? but they caught it. They, they did not honor that 10 grand check. I love Harlan. But they, um, you know, but, but that was a pattern. And then I found out he had done time in several states for such things. So oh, sobering. So, so what happened? Had to, I guess you had to get out of the apartment, right? Oh, I did. Yeah. And uh, it was just a nightmare. Like I related to you when you were describing your situation because it's a nightmare. You go to sleep not knowing if you're going to come back tomorrow with your house padlocked. Right. And it's. I mean, I have nightmares about it. It's a different place, but and it's in different places, but it's always no, the same No, I always thing. have that great fear uh, because, uh, you know, we're in this situation where we have a landlord that would love, they, 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 every day I think they say a prayer uh, because they're, they're devout Jews uh, that, that we're going to die. Okay. Does that, that sound very Jew-worthy? Well, because... It, 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 they want us to not be here. They love us not to be here. Right, because, but to pray for your downfall. Because the judge, the same judge, Judge Engerin, his decision was <laughs> that he considered that the the landlords were being fraudulent and that uh, in a way of punishing them, he rolled back the rent to what it was in 2003 to $500.07 a month. Baby, okay. score. So now it's two years later, and they have to renew that lease. We have to renew the original lease, right? Yeah. No, yeah. they suddenly send us a, a renew, lease renewal for $2,600 a month. So that would be more than five times the amount. Uh, more than, yeah, more, it, it doesn't matter. It's supposed to be based on the lease that they signed. Sure. Well, that wasn't. We've been trying to get them to send us a new renewal. If we don't sign the renewal, they can then throw us out of here 
But the fact is, we've now done a lot of things to prove that we're taking action. My lawyer, you know, it, 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 it and by the way, they it just uh, exhausted their last possible appeal. Uh, so uh, they're they're through. They got it. They got to live up to this. And we can't. I still haven't seen my renewals changed. You know. Can you so you just tell your lawyer, hey, this guy is not doing. Oh no, this. the lawyer's doing what he's got to do. We sent him a Good. letter saying you got to do this. You've exhausted every appeal. You know, this is the law. Send us a renewal. And this we haven't seen it yet. You know. Yeah, lawyers are like that agents they cost a lot but they get you more well in, in, in this case I, I don't think i've gotten more but i've gotten something <laughs> right you've gotten something that but, you, can live with. you know i mean it's just a lot of work just a lot of work hey i just saw that we've just run out of time can you believe well, that can it, you believe that it flies when you're having a fit well, no you, it, no i can i just have a great conversation with you can we uh, make a date to do this next week Oh, let's. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Lori Thompson. Bye, Lori. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay. Thank you very much, Lori Thompson. I love Lori. I love her. I love her to death. And uh, she's going out to California this weekend for a Live 105 reunion, which I'm not going to. Uh, it, it, by the way, it is a mess here in New York, and I'm glad I'm not. Have you seen the news? Have you seen the news about what's happened to our fair city here? The flooding, some of it uh, hasn't been seen in a century. See, we got these subways, uh, and they're underground. And when they built them, they, they built them as trenches, okay, and then they covered them with grates, all right? So now when it rains and it's flooding, the grating becomes a sieve for the, you get what I'm saying? Okay, n enough said. So there are floods down in the subways. I mean, it's horrible here, it's horrible here. But what the hell, you know? Am I a happy person? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I wasn't on last night because I don't know. I never get back aches. Okay. Now, I, I hate, com in fact, I'm from here on in, when I say we're not doing a show tonight, I'm not going to give you the reason why. Because you're sorry, you're sick and tired of hearing that I got some kind of little health concern. But I don't have any problem uh, with my back. My back's been pretty good shape. You know, I mean, as uh, you get older, your back gets a little. Yeah, a little hinky, but nothing terrible. Marjorie's is horrible, okay? It's because she got dropped as a baby on her back and blah, 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 and working out all the time and running and jumping and pouncing and using her body. It's uh, like I said to Richard Simmons, you know, if you don't use your body, it won't wear out, okay? So anyway, uh, I, I don't normally have back problems. The last couple of days... I have just been in pain. I mean, I can't bend over. I can't bend over to lift the toilet seat up, okay? So I take uh, ibuprofen, and that helps a little bit, and I'm putting ice on my back, and that helps a little bit, but only a little bit. And last night, it really got better. It got 100% uh, uh, better. And uh, I went to sleep, I woke up and it was 100% better. And then I came and I sat in this chair for about five minutes and I got up, my back was killing me again. What has happened though in the intervening time overnight was this storm, this amount of rain, precipitation that we've had. And that that's went and drove my back crazy. So last night I was in so much pain, I just didn't, you know, I just said, I can't do a show. I'm not gonna do a show. Uh, it's not that I don't want to do a show, I just can't. But anyway, we got some people waiting to come on here, just a couple of them, because as you know, the night after I do a show, don't do a show, nobody calls the next night just to get even with me. But anyway, let me let these people in here, and let me make sure all my stuff is up here. And uh, here they come. There's Jeff Stein, and there's Josh Wheeler, and there's uh, Charlie Wallace, uh, and... Uh, here comes Vernon Nunn, 
What happened to uh, Jeff? Well, we lost Jeff, but we gained Vernon. We think we gained Vernon. We will see Vernon shortly, I hope, unless he turns out to be somebody showing us. Uh, mm -mm. Uh, have, you, have you got, are you there, Vernon? Vernon? Vernon, are you there? Are you there, Vernon? I don't know what the problem is now, but uh, let's get rid of Vernon. If you, uh, people, even people I know, if they don't um, uh, make host, uh, let's yeah, see a here. a little concerning. Yes, okay, remove, okay, remove, remove. There we go. Really he's him, he's been removed. Him. Okay. I guess that's the... Uh, uh, oh, there, here he comes again. Uh, Come on this time. Yes, there he is. There he is. There he is. We thought you were a fake, Vernon. No, I'm just having uh, connectivity issues. Oh, really? Is it raining down there? Nope. Oh, because I, I was worried about getting connectivity issues tonight because I've noticed with our uh, our Internet connection, it uh, it goes sometimes down to a lower bandwidth which means the signal isn't as strong. So I'm thinking that uh, there's been a real problem with the, with the bandwidth in this area. So, what have you. Hi, Charlie, how are you? It's weird being the same age as an old person. As old people. people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, my old people t-shirt here, which says I'm vintage 1939. You know, so there we go. So how are you all doing? Good. I'm better. You're better? Yeah, well, I couldn't eat anything for three days. Why? Because I, was, I had a colonoscopy. Oh, wait morning. a minute. You're not, you don't have to not eat for three days because you're having a colonoscopy. <laughs> I, what, I what? misread the instructions. No, I only ate like jello and, and. No, no, and no, 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 soup no. And no. All, wait, yeah. wait a minute. Uh, I'm sure uh, as someone else here, I'm sure, has had a colonoscopy, right, Vernon? I've had three before. <laughs> and did they make you stop eating three days before? I don't remember what it was no. five years ago, ten years ago. No, they ago. tell you not to eat after midnight. No, 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 no. no. I had to eat just liquids, liquids all day yesterday. Here's why the day they, before. Here, here's why all of that is ridiculous. Okay, may I tell you that? It's yeah. because what are you taking that horrible, weird liquid for? It's to clear clean you, out everything. Clean out everything. Well, the way you clean out everything, it, you clean it out. It, it, it just don't. After you start doing that stuff, just eat. You know, I, I, are you are you really sure it said three days? No, I said I misread it. I actually. Could I have think you misread it. I think normal it probably, food on on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Just eat Mexican. <laughs> It'll clean me out, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, that stuff, that, that stuff you take, I, I took the magnesium citrate, which is the better one to take because yeah. it's, it's just one little bottle of the stuff. And then you do that and then you do it again the next morning and then you go to the doctor. And yeah. I, I always feel very good because my doctor has said to me, and this was just in the past, uh, you cleaned yourself out really well. <laughs> and I felt like I should get a little gold star, you know. Yeah, I gave you a sucker. Hmm? Give, give, give me a sucker. Yeah, yeah. Give, me, give me something, you know. But anyway, so. Anyway, you know, um, uh, uh, it'll probably be a light night tonight because nobody's, yeah. uh, you know. Or maybe. Well, the important, hmm? the important people are here, though. The important people are here. The intelligent people are here. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, um, I, I had two sores on my knee. Oh. On my knee, and now uh, now the other sore has gotten bad. They can't see the panel on on YouTube. Oh, I, because that's because I haven't put you guys on yet. Oh, you know why I wasn't doing that, and then because I didn't pay attention to Vernon it Nunn. because I was afraid Vernon Nunn was like two guys having sex. You know? Oh no! Uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, because people can sign in with any name, so a lot of times they will try and yep. sign in with the name I already have on the show. <laughs> Yep. Some of these people, however, are bad spellers, and they, yeah. <laughs> you know, they do it all wrong. Yeah, if anybody ever tries to sign in as V E R N A N, you know, it's not me. Yeah, right. 
By the way, and I'm I'm sniffling tonight too. I mean, the weather has just. Oh, gee, my my monitor just kind of dimmed a little bit. Wow. Uh, we may have a blackout during this show, huh? Wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't that be terrific? Nice. Mm. Who's the power company in New York City? Uh, uh, Con Ed. Con Ed, yeah. yeah. Uh, Consolidated Edison, um, which was the, well, Edison was the first electric company in Manhattan, yeah. but it was, uh, it wasn't, um, it wasn't uh, ACDC. It was. I heard, I, I read some history somewhere that Edison came up with the original idea of electrifying the country, but he wanted to use DC. Yeah, he wanted to use yeah. DC. And the problem with DC is you have to have a power station every 10 miles. Yeah. But with AC, DC, uh, you can go about 100 miles, 200 miles. Well, with AC, you can generate the, the uh, power at a higher voltage. Therefore, you can transmit it over longer distances. Right. And the thing was, that was the invention of, uh, what was his name, the other guy? Uh, uh, Tesla. House. No, Tesla. Tesla was ACDC, Tesla, and, a, yeah. and he worked West, for, Westinghouse. Westinghouse actually came up with the idea, though, of transmitting power via AC. Well, he worked for Edison, uh, Tesla. And then he he got he he had a falling out with uh, Edison, I think, because over AC DC, yeah. and and he and uh, so he just quit, and he went over and who did he? Uh, which company did he? Uh, Westinghouse, yeah. was where he went. I just said that. Yeah, Westinghouse, and he said that, mm -hmm. uh, and he convinced Westinghouse to invest in AC DC, and they built the AC DC plants. Well. Eventually, that turned out to be the winning yep. uh, solution yeah. to getting electricity everywhere. But you know some of the things he did to prove to people, to Edison, that ACDC uh, AC was terrible? He would electrocute people. He invented the electric chair yep. for that purpose so that he could that he could convince people how dangerous see how see how that kills people when he's they're sitting in that chair well, that's your acdc for you and then also you ever see those videos of uh of elephants being electrocuted to death yep. Th that was edison again killing animals defenseless animals in the name of commerce what a wonderful person edison was a nice guy yeah and he did. He was doing that, you know, uh, and it proved that. Oh boy, see, AC, a, 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 DC can't do that. But AC. Wasn't Edison can. involved in? Uh, when wasn't Edison involved in the first Nickelodeons? I don't think so. No, no. Here's what he was. Here, here, here's what happened. He invented, or he liked to make the world think that he had invented movies, which he clearly hadn't, because there was a guy by the name of Freeze Green in England who had come up with it before uh, Edison. Mm -hmm. and uh, But Edison uh, patented it here in America. And then he went after anyone who tried to make movies, not you know trying to circumvent his patent by just taking movies. Uh, and that's how Hollywood was born, right? That's how Hollywood was born, mm -hmm. because it was, it was, it was a, 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 uh, Edison had this thing called the Patents Trust. And it was all these people who were, you know, um, uh, got together and agreed that they would go along with Edison and they could all make movies. <clears throat> but anybody who didn't work under the Patents Trust, didn't pay the Patent Trust money uh, for trademark <laughs> and so on and copyright and I don't know, whatever, whatever patents more than anything else, <laughs> uh, uh, immediately could get you know, their machines, their equipment ruined. He sent thugs out to break their cameras. They would puncture holes in the camera, and then the camera, of course, light would come through and they couldn't shoot with it. Um, so they got sick of this, and they all went out to California. They figured, if we go all the way across the country, Edison isn't going to come after us. But Edison did. <laughs> and eventually they went to the government, and eventually the government really thumped Edison hard and said that what you're doing is antitrust and uh, you no longer can hold on to these patents. 
like you hold on to them. Mm. Uh, kind of what happened to our good friend Donald Trump the <laughs> other day. Uh, courtesy of my, by the way, my judge, the judge who did my rent case is the guy who made that decision the other day to D, what is it, uh, LLC uh, Trump in, in New York. To thump it. Yeah. Thump but the Trump. Ju judge Engarin, a good guy, a nice guy, nice guy, you know. But anyway, so that's, uh, yeah. that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Hello. How's your back doing? How's my back doing? Today, yeah. uh, it got terrible. I mean, the storm here was terrible, and it was really yeah, damp and I don't know. It was just, it was hell. And I tried putting ice on it. I, 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 uh, ibuprofen. That didn't do it. It's a little better now. Won't um, your doctor give you a narcotic like Norco for a week or so? No. I, I You know, if I want something, Marjorie's got some stuff. But I don't okay. like to take it because I can't sleep on it. It keeps me awake. Just Make, the opposite. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah, it it's, makes me. Well, it's not that you don't go to sleep. You just don't know you've gone to sleep. Hmm. It's strange. No, I, I, I don't. Uh, it, you know, most uh, most people that take narcotics, it makes them drowsy. For me, it wakes me up. Really? Yeah. It, yeah. Well, it, they, it, you it, can do that. In the medical world, they call that paradoxical. Yeah, the medicine does the opposite. It's kind of like you got you, you take you take aspirin for nothing. You don't have no problem. It gives you a headache. Kind of paradoxical. So. Well, I have to know how much pot to take. Uh, because if I take too much pot to put me to sleep at night, it'll keep me awake. But if I take just enough, it puts me right to sleep. Yep. Yeah. Well, lucky you. In California, uh, you can't be a pot user if you own firearms. One of the other stupid laws they have here. Can't be pot user. Wait, then how do they know you're a pot user? Well, I don't know. Do they come out to your house and see if you've well, got when a you, vape? When you, when you, when you, now, when, now when you buy a firearm, you got to sign a federal form that says you know it's the same federal form that everybody signs to buy the gun and it says you use marijuana on a regular basis you got and you could lie but it's Isn't a that what got hunter biden in trouble that's what got hunter yeah. biden in trouble but yes what do you do do you say yes and they still arrest you i mean what uh, no no they don't arrest you pot's legal in california it's just <laughs> It's one of the ways they try and control people from buying firearms in California. Well, I'm not here to defend people who, who buy firearms, okay? But it seems to me there's something wrong with that law. In there's that, a lot. In that, if you have the right to bear arms, let's assume you do. I don't think you do. But let's say you have the right to bear arms, as they believe, then they've got to defend somebody not being turned down, not being allowed to be turned down smoking you know for smoking pot and buying a firearm yeah where's the nra on all of that they should be storming the, the capital for it yeah well the nra is worthless in california yeah. well i mean it may be worthless but it, you know i mean the fact of the matter is that if you believe that you do have the right to bear arms and you shouldn't say that there are any provisos to be i mean do they ask you if you use alcohol no now how no, many people how many people do you think shoot other people with guns while they're high on alcohol. Hmm. Uh, hundreds of times more than marijuana. That's correct. Yeah. So how stupid. So the, 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 the deal is with them, and the reason hmm. that they can do it, is alcohol is legal under federal law. But it is. Marijuana yeah. is not legal under federal hmm. law. And that's how they get around it. Speaking of California government, who do you think that uh, Newsom's going to appoint to take Feinstein's place. You know, I just heard that Feinstein died today. Uh, you know, she was great, and I'm sorry to hear that. But um, somebody told me that he's going to appoint another female, black female, to take her place. You know what I could never understand? Which I think is fine. I you, mean, I had no problem with that. Yes, Alex, what couldn't you understand? Uh, you know <laughs> what I could, never could understand? Why she was so much against guns. When if it weren't for guns, she probably never would have become mayor or senator. You don't know why. Or mayor. Or, or mayor. Yeah. Or mayor. Excuse me, mayor. That's what I meant. 
Uh, you don't know why for real, or are you just making no? A joke? I'm just kidding. I'm making a joke. Oh, okay. Uh, we don't. We, well, what we don't know is. Fact, if, I think uh, I remember doing that joke for the first time on San Francisco radio. To tell you the goddamn truth, you know, that's how old she is. So we don't. What we don't know is if she would have. Uh, become mayor on her own when uh, Moscone... Uh, well, she was only uh, a supervisor at the time. Yeah. So it wasn't like she was a vice mayor. No, actually, you're, you're, you're right and you're wrong. So she was one of the supervisors in San Francisco is elected by the panel of supervisors to be vice mayor. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. so she was actually vice mayor, and that's how she took over the position of mayor when Moscone and Milk were murdered. Yeah, well, I mean, she, she was there when it happened. Yeah, yeah. she's uh, she was uh, you know she was okay, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, I thought she was okay. But what she was is she was a Democrat who could cross the aisle to vote for something if she felt it was right, and don't not feel guilty water. about it. You know, today if you're if you're a Republican and you don't vote a certain way, you're ostracized. Get out of here. And the same thing's true if you're a Democrat. If you're a Democrat and you want to do stuff like that, I mean, I don't like what's his name. Uh, who who's the terrible Democrat in the in the Senate? Uh, oh, uh, Man Mansion. Mansion. We all Manchin. hate we all hate Mansion, but at least he doesn't vote party line, you know. Uh, so we have to give him some credit for that. But hmm. how you doing, Josh? How do you feel about Diane Feinstein? I'm doing well. Um, you know, I was sad to see that she uh, died. I saw that this morning. You know, she had uh, she looked really ill. You know, for a, a long time. I think. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. People don't generally look great. You know, before they right before they die. But uh, do I look okay? Yeah, you look fine. Oh, yeah. okay, fine. Um, Thank you. But uh, but you know, I'd seen some photographs of her and. And I just, you know, you just feel bad, you know, because she just was in really bad shape. But, well, you, you know, know what's interesting? Just, uh, what's interesting okay. is yesterday she was there in the, in the Senate voting yeah. on something. Yeah, and that's uh, what I was saying was, you know, she continued to work. And, you know, you can have the debate about whether that was right or wrong, and that's fine. But she did, you know. Um but then also, there's a picture Dedication. with her and, and some lit person from California mm -hmm. uh, who's not in the Senate. I think she isn't holding public office anymore, but she knew her from California. And she went over to see her last night and has a photograph of her with her, which yeah, had to be... And I, uh, so who well, knows what she died of? I mean, she, she just died in her sleep, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't see, but... Uh... You know, with what you were talking about, I was sitting here earlier uh, when I got home. At five o'clock, I finally sat down or something like that, and uh, I turned on uh, C-SPAN, you know, to the Senate channel, and, you know, Lisa Murkowski, the senator from Alaska, was speaking, and she got up, and she gave a very nice speech about uh, Senator Feinstein, and you know, the, the point of her speech was to say that, I mean, she really, she openly said that I, I understand that we don't do ourselves any favors because people would look at us today and not Hello. think that someone like Diane Feinstein and I would be great friends. But, you know, she said, yeah. I'm but Diane Feinstein and I were as close as two women could be. And, you know, she said it all started a long time ago when traveling was much more difficult. And, you know, I'm from Alaska, and she was from California. You know, on, on many weekends, a lot of senators would go home, or congressmen, and we wouldn't because the trip was just too long and the turnaround was too short. And, you know, she said it just started like that, and, yeah. and she would say, you know, we're in town, we're alone, let's go get some dinner, you know. And, and she right. said, we just go out like two people. And, and, you know, she just was trying to educate the public on the fact that there was a time that, they could sit down and eat a meal without having to argue about something. Well, you know? I mean, uh, who who was uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Who who was her best pal? Well, she was very close to Antonin Scalia for yeah. a very yeah. long time. Yeah. You know? yeah. And they were both clear about the same thing, too, that it is possible for people to, number one, forget about that stuff for a while and act like human beings. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, and then number two, when the time does come time to do business, remember that those people that are disagreeing with you are people that you know and like, and in the end are after the improvement and the preservation of our democracy, and you should play the game within that mindset. You know, and Murkowski's point and my point would be that their party and some others have allowed people who are not necessarily interested in the preservation of democracy become mm -hmm. the loudest voices in the room. And, you know, I think that's what Dianne Feinstein worked against right up until she died. You know, I mean, I've talked before that I'm not an idiot and that I don't use words like it. I don't throw stuff around because it will get me viewers on TV or anything, but, you know, some of the folks that they're allowing in that party to talk as loud as they are are, are, are borderline fascist or are fascist, if you ask me. And, and I understand. Well, that usually that what would happen, that term. you know, the Republican Party, if it has a fault, <laughs> has a fault, if it has, it has a major fault, it's that it attracts fascists. You know, well, and it has always. But the the thing that was good about the Republicans is they always push them off to the margins. Well, that's you that's know? what I'm saying, and I think that's what she was saying was that they did that because mm -hmm. people like her and Diane Feinstein were always able to share a meal and figure out a solution, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and now it's become uh, a taboo to be seen even eating with you know, the enemy, if you will, because well, look they're at what's the enemy. Look, well, that's look, what's right. ha look what's happened here with this, uh, getting this uh, budget, budget to go through. Mm -hmm. It's being held up by just a handful of people. Well, and a handful, a handful of Republicans yeah. who are trying to, you know, but what's his yeah, name? Who, who, if who do not they're have, infighting. Huh? Yeah, who do not have the best interest of the country in mind or the preservation and democracy um and i heard well i mean the main guy who's go, the, main, the main guy who's going after them is the, is what the baby raper who who's that guy yeah they're in fighting and, and they're claiming that they're all backing up they're doing this for america which is a bunch of crap yeah i mean i heard earlier today that that, that there's a chance and i should probably put it on the channel and see but that the main legislative business that they may actually try to tackle on the floor tonight is a vote to remove uh, McCarthy as speaker rather than votes to That's uh, true. avoid shutting down the government. Well, I mean, it, because because he signed uh, a thing when, to become speaker, he wanted it so badly. Mm -hmm. He what he want what he got was the speaker of the house in name only, mm -hmm. uh, because it, 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 what it takes now. Marjorie said it wrong to me. She said it only takes one person. No, it doesn't take one person. It takes one person to bring it to a vote. Mm -hmm. So any any possible. moron, and we right. know we have several of them in the Republican oh, I mean, Party. Uh, well, who who's 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 who's, who's the guy who was accused? Gates. Of, Gates. Gates is the one that's Gates. Gates. all the shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where where did he come from? He only got well known because he tried to have sex with a young girl. Pedophile. Yeah. 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 So I mean, uh, and you can call him that, by the way, because he is in he is in uh, in the in uh, the Senate or Congress rather. He's, yeah, in, Congress. he's in the Congress, and you can say anything you want to about him, and he can't sue you. But because he's a public he, official, he can say anything he wants to about you, and you can't sue him. So you know, it goes both ways. Well, look, I mean, there. Look, it's a. It's a clown show, okay? I mean, you know, that's the facts. And I mean, I thought it was pretty ridiculous that they took a two-week break here just a week or so ago yeah. with all this going on. I mean, listen, you know, I work in an industry right now where we're going through, you know, three or four weeks of these, these PSM audits and ISO audits, and then we've got an internal business audit. And I'm not taking any time off, and our eh and manager canceled a vacation because these things got scheduled. I mean... You do what you have to do to work, right? This is their job. And their job was in crisis. And it's like, well, you know, we, we need our bread. I mean, we don't need it. I mean, come on. Well, here, here, one of the things so, that some of them are trying to do is to make sure that we don't give any more money to Ukraine. Yeah. I mean, which would be a stupid, stupid mistake. Well, well that's, a big, that's a big thing for McCarthy. That's a big thing for him. And that's, that's, that's what's disgusting 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's a stupid thing because let's be very honest about it. If you don't stop Putin there, I'm sorry, he's going to try to go elsewhere. You know, sure. and well, uh, I can agree with 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 I I do agree with you, and I think it would be stupid. Now, I will say that if you as a person have that belief that we shouldn't support him, I could say, okay, I understand that. That's a that's your foreign policy view, right? You're you're an isolationist, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to have that. That's fine. That is a perfectly legitimate uh, idea to have. Uh, you're within your rights. However, shutting down the United States government simply because you're not going to get it when 80% of your colleagues do, that's not, you know, that's where I have the problem, right? I mean, you can think about, you can say, that's how I feel. I don't feel we should support them. Uh, it's not doing any good, it's wrong, uh, we should protect the homeland, you know, spend the money. Okay, fine. That's policy. That's perfectly fine. Then vote against the bill. Right? But but to just say, nope, we're going to use all these tactics and all that, not bring the bill up, and we're not going to agree to this, that, and the other because of that, you know, because you're not getting your way. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't know about you, but when I was a little kid, if you threw a temper tantrum like that, I'm sorry, but I would have got my ass beat. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, that's just where I came from. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you were told yes or no, and you pretty much learned to live with it, whether you liked it or not. You had to work within the system, you know, and they have a system, and they don't like the results they're getting because they're in the minority. Well, you know, they're in the vast majority, or m minority, you know, so deal with it, move on. Yeah. Then get someone in your party elected. And get more power and convince more people and move on. But, you know, half the time in this country, oddly enough, I mean, I don't like like it when they take polls and they say, well, a percentage of Americans want this and a percentage of Americans don't want this, right? Now, what I don't like about that is not the fact that it's a poll, but that it's not the way in which Congress is going to wind up voting. So it doesn't matter what the average American thinks. It matters what the average person in Congress thinks is going to have to pass this legislation. Well, well it, it, the yeah. fact is, I think maybe we should look at the polls and forget about the Congress people in order to enact these well, things. Because I mean, things uh, like no, Ukraine, say, people, then, are, people are still saying with Ukraine that they would like, the vast majority of them would like us to give money, continue giving money to, to Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, look, and there's a, and I'll just add this and then let, you know, Kevin or, or whoever weigh in, but there are certain things like that where I'll be honest with you, I don't give a damn what the poll say. You know, there's there's this old line from the West Wing where uh, someone's telling the president how many Americans are against some kind of nuclear treaty that he's trying to sign, and he says, you know what, frankly, this is just one of those issues where I don't give a damn what the American people think. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, the fact an is... An auto mechanic in Waukegan, Illinois, is just not qualified. The fact is, is that if... if a nuclear treaty. Yeah, but if you have a... You know, if somebody... If, if the public feels a certain way on something, it really doesn't matter what they think because Congress is going to decide what's going to happen. Yeah. And there should... Somehow we should have a system where this kind of stuff isn't allowed to be fought over. You know, where... Is it, it when when uh, let's say uh, oh I don't know UAW uh, is uh, is suing is trying striking against the auto companies okay okay they're out on strike okay so now it goes on for a while and what happens sometimes they're forced into arbitration yeah. well there's no sign of being able to force the two parties in this into <laughs> arbitration right. Where they have to sit down in front of somebody and they have to nail it out there at a table, or else get out of town. Yeah. Uh, and and so that's the one thing we don't have is arbitration. Am I right, Vernon? Am I wrong? Well, uh, the other thing we don't have is uh, like the British. You can ha you can have a vote of no confidence. Oh well, <laughs> that's what's happening. You can't to, uh, you can't do that. You can't do that in this country. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's uh, it, it's amazing uh, what's happening with this whole thing now. It's 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 devastating, and uh, um, yeah, you know, yes, uh, Jeff. Jeff is muted. You're Jeff. muted, Jeff. 
Bingo. <laughs> I'm Bingo. pretty uh, must. Uh, Wait a minute. Bingo. Really? Oh, he does have I'm the numbers. Really a, can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I really would like to reduce the number of people who are senators and congressmen. I think there's just too many people who are not doing much. Well, I, I, I don't know if I would agree with that necessarily because the whole structure of the system is based upon those numbers. Yeah. You know, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, you have two senators from every state. Okay, yeah. that's to equalize out the vote on that side. And then the Congress, you have uh, two, two congressmen, I think, am I right, for every state plus one for every congressional district. Well, well, there's only there's only one congressional uh, representative for some states, yep. like Rhode Island only has one. Mo what? Montana only has one. Is that because they only have one congressional district? Alaska. Only yes. Has. Oh, well, okay. It's, it's it's proportional by population. So, a state that has a population that is less than the congressionally mandated number of citizens per representative only gets one representative in the mm -hmm. U.S. House of Representatives. Yes. All states get two senators. Yeah. So Unfortunately, can... that's true. So you have the Midwest where you have a population that is less than California in 15 states and they control 30 senators. Yep. California that's... gets two. Yes, uh, yes, Alan. It, you know, you know that they're shutting down the federal government, but they still get paid. Yes, well, they're essential workers. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, I actually, what I think is that maybe that's the first thing we should do is enact a law that uh, the uh, first, uh, the first thing, the first people that should be hurt by a shutdown of the government are Congress people and senators. Mm -hmm. Number one. When with with the senators, have you ever heard of a senator dying poor? Yeah, you have. Yes, John McCain. <laughs> Was he poor? Well, I thought you said die before. No, I said oh. die, die poor. Well, no, you, you no. Know. Oh. So why uh, they got enough money to hold themselves yeah. over in a work stoppage or a, a payment stoppage? Okay. You know, no problem. But all yeah. right, yeah. you bet. All uh, right. Yeah. So anyway, I'm getting rid of people here. There's a couple people trying to get on with phony names. One calling himself X. It must be Elon uh, Musk. Must be. Um, hey, uh, uh, Josh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I've been an advocate for years of the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. And I just noticed on the latest update that Michigan and Wisconsin have bills pending to adopt that which would get us up to 230 electoral votes. We need 270 for it to go into effect. What is that, the winner takes all thing? Or? Well, the, the Congress, the Constitution of the United States mm -hmm. specifically tells each state that they can pass laws how they are electing their electors for the electoral college. Mm -hmm. Every state except for two, it's winner take all in that state. They do it by congressional district in Nebraska and Maine. Mm -hmm. It's whoever has the most votes in that district gets that elector. Mm -hmm. But every other state has adopted winner take all in that state. Well, the problem, the, the, the whole purpose of the NPVIC is that a state will adopt the law that says when 270 electoral votes are in play, they will elect their representatives to the electoral college based on the national vote not just the vote in their state okay so in other words if this were the order of the day hillary clinton would have wound up being president correct because she got about three million more votes than uh, yep. than trump and yes. and that never seemed right you know i mean uh, it, it almost makes voting seem mm -hmm. You George know. W. Bush, the first time he was elected, he didn't get the majority of the popular votes. No. No. Nope. Not at all. Oh, well, you know, they'll, they'll solve this program called America someday. 
Well, George W. Bush got selected by the uh, by the only because the Supreme Court told right. Florida that they could that, not do the recount. That's yeah. right. That's right. So the Supreme Court really put him in office. Well, there was you could say they did, but the question is, and I'd ask Josh this because he's the big uh, uh, guy on the Supreme Court uh, when that subject ever comes up is that they decided that uh, the voting had to stop in Florida. And that was going on forever. I mean, that was just like a big circle jerk. It was just the dog chasing its tail. Did they make a right decision? And I'd ask Josh that. No, because they did do a recount and Gore won Florida. Oh, okay. But if they did it, then then they would say, we want want another one. They could take another one and then Gore would lose Florida. I mean, what it was doing was going around in circles. Am I right, Josh? Well, it did go back and forth around like that for a long time. And uh, it's been a while, so I don't remember all the exact news coverage and specifics. But, uh, I mean, they probably stopped it a little prematurely out of their fear that it was going to drag on and get past the point where electors were appointed and confirmed and, you know, we were going to have a crisis. There was also another worry that it would get it would butt into baseball season. Yeah, so, you know. But they, uh, I think, I mean, I personally, I guess, from what I remember, I think they could have gave a little more time. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, you know, when it was in front of them, they decided it, and rather than give it more time, I think they thought, you know, their best bet was to just end it and then be done with it, and then everyone move on and at least Mm -hmm. that's what happened it's it's strange how we had something as controversial as that and everyone you know i mean a lot of people obviously didn't like it but everyone was just like well you know that's what they said right you know let's done with it you know including Mm -hmm. the candidates themselves and now look where we are you know just 20 years later i mean Gosh, you know, I mean, you know, I mean. Well, I mean, how many times, you know, I I all, of course, for getting rid of the uh, of the um, (coughs) electoral college. And the main argument I have against the electoral college is how many times has the vote gone counter to the popular vote in recent years? I mean, it's becoming more and more common rather than uncommon. I mean, it's and certainly it's the ha- reason the reason that I gave a while ago. Mm-hmm. You have states with lower population yep. still get two senators, even That's though right. California only gets two senators. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, wasn't that meant though? Um, again, Josh, I go to him because he knows the history of this. Wasn't that meant so that the Senate was an equal? Everybody had an equal vote in it, but in the Congress, it was uh, representational and. Per, uh, per, uh, um, so it's yeah, that was the end result, but the, I mean that end result was a compromise because, you know, really, most of the people at the convention wanted proportional representation in both houses, um, which would have, you know, at the end of the day, what it really did was it settled a major debate between large states and small states. Mm -hmm. Uh, Small states were incredibly worried that large states would basically swallow them up and almost annex them um, with their power and that they would also be able to block things that would benefit small states like navigational uh, taxes and things like that because some of your smaller states that didn't have a lot of population could still have a lot of economic uh, power through their ports and things like that. And they were afraid, you know, they would be either swallowed up or laws passed that would take a lot of that economic power away from them. And you have to remember the history of that was under the Articles of Confederation, those small states had incredible power because under the Articles of Confederation, nothing got done unless it was unanimous. All the states had to agree. So you think we have gridlock today? Yeah. You don't have any gridlock today like you had then. I mean, the reason the convention was called for and was able to get done was because the articles were such a massive failure of gridlock because you could have 12 of the 13 states completely on board with something and here's Rhode Island saying, nope, nope, not going to do it. Nope, yes. not, you know, we want this, we want that. Acting like children like we see today. Mm-hmm. 
and it just and like it, the Republicans it, in the Congress. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it created complete gridlock. And the most interesting lesson from it all, and I mentioned this on here before, is that Madison, really in his wisdom, tried to explain to these guys that you are arguing over large state and small state. And he's like, and I'm telling you, large state and small state is not the issue. It will not tear this country apart. The issue will be free state or slave state. And I mean, that, that was his prophecy at the convention, and he turned out to be exactly right. Mm -hmm. But in order to move past the impasse, the 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 agreement was to give proportional representation mm -hmm. to one house or one chamber and equal representation in the other. And then originally those states chose their own senators through their state legislatures, uh, not by popular vote in the states so that the legislatures could choose their senators to represent the states, and then it gave even more internal control to those states at the time. Because the main theme that you just have to remember anytime you think about the convention or anything in that period was things at that time were incredible, incredibly parochial when it came to mm -hmm. all the states were self-interested. Okay. They never thought about what was good for the nation. Mm -hmm. They thought about what was good for their state. Okay, let me let me change the subject here because I I do something I play a little game and it's when something big big news item hits you know I I don't go over to MSNBC because I know what they're going to say I immediately know what they're going I could write the script of what they're going to say and how they're going to take care of it the one that's always a surprise to me is not CNN it's not uh, because it, it, uh, they, they're all a certain way but I go over to Fox to see what their lead story is because it is always amazing to me that they so lie to their audience that they where, wherever you position the news is actually telling the audience what the most important story is okay so this is let me tell you the time today 10 o'clock this morning would anybody care to guess what their number one lead story was on Fox? Hunter Biden's laptop. No. No. Diana Feinstein dying. Nope. No. Uh, uh, you the, would think uh, it would be, right? Impeach hmm? The possible impeachment of Biden. Nope. Hmm. Military. Amount of money being spent on the no, nope, not not at all. Military. Anybody want to guess? Anybody else want to guess? No, it was uh, what's his name, Mister Mister former Twitter now Mister X. Um, Musk Musk Elon Musk. Hmm. I'm bad with names lately. Elon Musk. Uh, <laughs> was it the border? No, oh. that was that was. I mean, come on. All the ones you mentioned perhaps would have made more sense than Elon Musk went to the border today. Looking for somebody to mow his And they covered him for 10 minutes. What's he going to do, beam him back over or what? Well, he's going to do a live feed for, for on, on X, you know, from there. I mean, but that's what the story was. That was the number one story. Number two story was something else, too. I kept waiting for Diane Feinstein. I, d I had to wait till three o'clock in the afternoon to hear them actually talk about Diane Feinstein. Wow. Now, it, it doesn't bother me that they have a political bias. That that I I can uh, you know you have it. I have it. I have a political bias. I I promote it here on this program all the time. It's my store. I can say whatever I want to here, but you don't make people who are relying on you for the news reappropriate what the important story is. And Dianne Feinstein is a pretty, pretty important story on so many different levels. Like right now, what's going to happen to the Senate? The Senate has to vote on the new budget. Will we have enough senators to vote on it? And I, I they already know. have. They're waiting on the House to do their thing. Yeah. Oh, they already did do it? In the yeah, House Republicans. Yeah. Oh, okay. The Senate has passed it. Oh, okay. Maybe that's why Dianne Feinstein was there yesterday to cast a vote. You know. But anyway, uh, it, it, just, it just bothers me that Fox does that. 
uh, lying is one thing. Just completely distorting the news to where you give the importance of news items different weight. And I've seen it happen all the time. That's why I go over there for the sheer entertainment of it all. I mean, for months it was Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden, laptop, 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 Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden. And I'm going, don't you have anything else to talk about? And Did if you, you hear think, about the impeachment inquiry? The, 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 number, the, the very first witness they had oh, yeah, at yeah. the impeachment inquiry said, you guys don't have anything. He's, a, he's also a Fox regular. This guy, yeah, yeah, and he they got oh, they were they were expecting he was just going to yeah. say, oh yeah, he could be impe-. He said, this is ridiculous, this impeachment oh, idea. And, 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 I hope this costs the house in 2024. I hope that, you know that, the American public has a very short memory, and they vote yeah, they, par- sure they vote party line, and they vote then yeah. what they when they don't vote on party line, they vote on their uh, pocketbook, okay. And it's all very selfish the way people vote. They don't say. There are very vo- there are vulnerable seats in New York, especially where Biden won their district, but the Republican won the House. Yeah, we got the liar in there. What's his name? George Santos. Santos. George Santos. Santos. You don't see him much anymore. I guess he doesn't go to work anymore, does he? <laughs> well, he's been stripped of all of his committees. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. but he's trying to find a new name. <laughs> that he can register in Congress under. Oh man, you know. So I mean, it it it's just I I just I just find the dishonesty that's going on around in the name of of trying to push your agenda. To What's be even just, more hilarious oh. is Kevin McCarthy. He is the Speaker of the House in name only. Yeah. Well, he knows that too. You know. I mean, he, he, it's not like, Nancy Pelosi was Speaker of the House, oh, all right? Absolutely. Rule with an iron hand, iron fist, iron whatever. Now, the President of the United States said she was Speaker of the House, George W. Bush. Yeah. She yeah. became in the State of the Union. Yeah, Speaker of the <laughs> House, right? He's yep. not Speaker of the House. If one vote can start a, 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 a vote for impeachment to get rid of him, to throw him out, what you're, you're there? You're there as a caretaker. I think he should call their bluff because they would have to have 218 votes to remove him, and I, I don't think they'll get all 218. Well, look how long it to took. Vote. Look at how long it took him to get the votes to to get him in. 15 rounds. Times. Huh? If fifteen votes. Fifteen. Fifteen votes. So <laughs> not not fifteen votes difference. We're talking about 15 votes. 15 actual votes. Actual votes, yeah. I mean, he, he just wanted that too badly. Yep. And, and he... Um, he wanted to push his agenda. But, but he didn't even want to push his agenda. He just wanted no, the he job. He wanted to push everybody I mean, else's agenda. I mean... Or what others it, wanted. What could and he hasn't, done, he hasn't gotten shit done. We probably don't have enough time left to really delve into this question, but I've been saying it lately. What kind of situation can we create where people's only agenda should be what's best for the country and not what's best for me? What, don't we See, make... that's, the, that's the kind of crap that he keeps saying that he's doing. It's what's best for the country, and it's bullshit. Well, but wait a minute. The what is the reason by why most people want to be Speaker of the House, or want to be President of the United States, or be a congressman, or be a prestige, prestige, prestige. power, yeah. so on. Power. Yep. Okay. So you, if, if you strip that reason, and make the reason have to be that really this person's there because they just want to help. You're going to be in a lot better shape, but I don't believe that most of the people in Congress are really there because they want to help. Because if there wasn't the power there and there wasn't the uh, the money there, and you know, Congress, what what do senators make now? They're up to about two hundred, hundred and fifty, hundred seventy seven thousand, hundred seventy seven thousand. Yeah. Okay, what's a congressperson get? The same, the same. Re- really? Because yeah. I I always heard that Congress people. Uh, were like living in dorms in some areas because they they slept in their office because they couldn't afford to 
Rent yeah, that's because they have to have a house back in their district, and now they got to have a house in, in Washington, D.C., too. And if you're a poor, average person like AOC, you don't have any other income. Yeah, and you're not allowed that's to take any, people. you're not allowed to take any other income either. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this, this go, goes on forever. Uh, it's, it's just, what do we do to take that incentive out of there? Vote. Because, yeah. because we could say, well, don't pay them as much, but then only people who are exceedingly rich could afford to be in Congress exactly, and in yeah. the Senate. So it's it's really, uh, what do you do to take that incentive out? What we have to do is we have to hope that the American public becomes more intelligent in their voting practices. And that's not going to happen. That's never going to happen. Job. So we're all sunk, right? Mm. You know? I mean, yeah. other countries are laughing at us these days. You know, ha-ha, that's the democracy? You know, we don't act like Well, they got to get rid of the Republican control of the House because when the Democrats had control, they were passing bills left and right. The Republicans get control, they don't pass anything. <clears throat> Why is it they don't pass their own version of the bill? Why is it they, they just don't... Want they want to do these investigations against Biden. Yeah, they're doing They don't it. want to govern. They do not want to govern. They are there to cause chaos because chaos gets them money from donors. Well, maybe, I don't know. We, it, it, the, the system's got to be rethought. There's something wrong here. There's something that has brought it to a point where it has become totally dysfunctional. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. we're starting in, this, in the right direction because did you see where that uh, federal judge told Alabama you will redraw those districts? Yeah. Even though they refuse to do it, the judge says, oh, yes, you will. Yeah, and that happens every now and then, but, you know, it doesn't happen enough. I mean, we, we should, first of all, our first priority should always be voters' rights because without that... What? Don't want people to vote. Republicans don't want people to vote. That's right. They, they want to have the lowest voter turnout possible because that's when they win. Yep. 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 Well, you know, I I I I really question uh, the way all this whole thing works, and uh, who knows? You know. I think we should adopt a rule like Australia has that if you don't vote, you yep. pay a fine. Yep. Um, that'll never pass either. Yeah. Okay. I mean, just like you were talking about withholding the paychecks from the congressmen and their staff, they'll never vote on a law like that. I, you know, the one thing, and all of us here, and we got about a minute left, should be scared crapless about. Can I use that word, YouTube? Crapless? Um, is that Trump gets reelected. And I know we see that as an impossibility, but we saw him getting elected in the first case um, impossible, and it happened. Well, I don't think it's that as much as he actually does lose the vote in 2024, but he claims that he won like he did in 2020, and then all hell breaks loose. That, too. You know, this is not a guy who cares about America or even loves America or loves what America stands for. He just loves Donald Trump. Yeah. And uh, it ain't getting any better for him. And thank you very much, Judge Engeren, uh, who was my judge in my case, for doing what you did to Donald Trump. I wanted to send him a note saying congratulations, but we still have some problems left with uh, that are going to have to go before him, and I don't want it to be thought that I was trying to kiss up to him. So anyway, <laughs> that's it. But I'm playing the theme right now. And, uh, uh, gee, it's been a nice uh, hour of discussion. And thanks also to Lori Thompson for having joined us earlier. She's always a delight to have here. Josh, good seeing you again, my friend. Mm -hmm. And he volunteered last night when I was uh, not feeling well to come in here tonight and host the show. But I felt well enough to do it tonight. But thank you for offering. I really appreciate it. No problem. It. Uh, and uh, thank you to uh, our good friend, um, uh, Charlie Wallace uh, for his help in tonight's program as well as Vernon Nunn who's always one of our favorites Jeffrey Stein who always makes sure he's here and you know is in attendance 
Alan, thank you. Appreciate it. And, of course, to Kevin, thank you as well. We'll all of you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, they'll be reassembled in, in just a few minutes on the Jack Bishop program over most of this same gab net. Uh, he wasn't on last night because he was ill, okay? Uh, but uh, tonight he should be there, and he'll be taking your calls uh, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow. Oh, let's see, I'll see you again on Monday. We do that wonderful Monday show called The uh, Pop-Up, and uh, that will be here and about uh, at uh, 4 o'clock on, uh, on um, Facebook. Yep. So we'll see you then. In the meantime, as always, oh, I'll also see you on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, Wednesday as well. Uh, back here for our regular show, The Ramble, uh, at, uh, let's see here, 10.30 Eastern Time. Uh, in the meantime, as always, if you see her, I'll get out of here eventually. Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.